Welcome back, Dr. Cabral. To the Great show. to be here. Your episodes are also always very popular. Almost didn't recognize him in the navy blue shirt today. <laughs> yeah, He's throwing us off today. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a brand new world. Yeah. Dude, you're not wearing your uniform, man. You're I not know. wearing your uniform. Today we're going to talk about inflammation, but you also look like you put on a little muscle from the last... Is it just the shirt, or did you gain a little... I always maintain just this kind of same body weight okay. right around 167. Uh, you know, I'm only 5'8", so I don't have a whole lot of uh, height to work with. <laughs> okay. So, uh, no, this is this is just the, I call it the body weight for life. I'm just going to maintain this, I hope, you know, through my uh, 90s and up to 100. Uh, good, good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about inflammation today. Um, and at the end, you know, towards the end, we'll talk about our tests that we did with you to kind of see if we had any improvements yeah. in our inflammatory markers. But let, let's start out by talking about why this is important to look at. What is inflammation? What is inflammation? What is its role in the body, and what happens when it's off? Why? Why is it so important to to try to regulate or fix it? Uh, you know, for lack of a better term, if it is off. Yeah, one of the reasons I'm excited to be back here, excited to go over your new test results, which we got from about a year or two years ago, maybe a year and a half. And the big thing is, we spoke about what are omega three six, you know, what are omega three foods, what are omega six foods, but I don't know that we dove enough into what is this thing called inflammation? How does it actually be created in the body and what can we do about it? So one of the things that's important here talking about this is that inflammation only begins to build as we get older. And so we still want to be able to live the same life. We still want to be able to weight train. We still want to be able to maintain the same sleep, eat the same foods, or hopefully, you know, as good a diet as we can, but it becomes harder to keep in check. So what I want to share today is a couple things. There's this omega-6, omega-3 pathway, which is just greatly overlooked. I have a few studies I'd love to share with you here today that helps with everything from diabetes to cardiovascular issues to blood pressure to cancer and Alzheimer's. Now, those are the top five leading causes of death, so we should absolutely pay attention to those. But then there are other studies on depression, anxiety, um, sleep, and skin that are all improved through your omega-6, omega-3 balance. So we'll talk about that in what's called eicosanoids. So eicosanoids are these inflammatory lipids, so essentially fats. But then there's another part of inflammation called cytokines. We heard about a lot of this during the pandemic, people talking about cytokines. That's an inflammatory protein. And so there's two different molecules that we look at in the body that can signal for inflammation. Both of them, though, can be greatly quieted through improving your omega-6 to omega-3 profile. And by that, I mean reducing omega-6s, increasing your omega-3s. Okay. Now, inflammation exists for a reason, right? It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a signaler in the body. Like, wh why do we even have it in the first place? And why do we always hear about just bringing it down? Because if it is essential, you need to have some, right? 100%. And so you know, even when we look at the best diets, they're about three to one from omega-6s to omega-3s. So- one great example, and we just touched on it last time, was arachidonic acid. And I think you said way back in the day, Sal, that you used to take arachidonic acid. They still sell it. They still sell it as a supplement. After our interview, in fact, I looked it up. Really? And there are some studies, but they're not great ones, that say supplementing with this will boost the muscle building signal or whatever. And yes. I told you on the podcast, I had experimented with it and felt terrible. Like I just did not feel good. Obviously, it shot my inflammation through the roof. So mm -hmm. yeah, so. Well, that's what we want to talk about today. So basically there's linoleic acid that converts down to arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid though, interesting enough, is super pro-inflammatory. So not ideal for cardiovascular issues, joint-based pain, many other factors. But what happens is when we weight train and we break down muscle tissue, our cell membranes actually release arachidonic acid naturally mm -hmm. into the body. Now, that's supposed to happen. So then what happens is it does create these inflammatory uh, eicosanoids, these prostaglandins, which then tell something called satellite cells to begin to repair this muscle tissue. And another fascinating thing is that this these satellite um, cells, they're called, actually begin to bind with the muscle cell membranes to create hypertrophy. Mm. So it's one more reason why arachidonic acid released naturally through our muscles, healthy, taken in um exogenously from the outside, not as healthy. So, okay, this this leads me to a question. Sal's been saying this for years uh, about uh, getting stuck in a recovery trap mm -hmm. where people are tra over training so much that the body never adapts, grows, and builds muscle, and they're just stuck in this recovery trap. Yes. Is that what it is? Is it that, uh, the, uh, would you say AA? The AA? The acid. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm going to mess that up no, we'll, multiple times Yeah, we'll times use today. all the uh, short <laughs> <and> AA. <laughs> <He'll use> AA. <laughs> is that because it's like too much of that is being released in the body and there's a sweet spot of, you know, 
breaking down and and you want some of that to send the signal to actually build and adapt but then is that what it is is that what you would attribute to how you talk communicate the recovery trap it's probably is- more complex there's a lot of uh, um you know just overwhelming stress in general i don't know if it has to do with the arachidonic acid but um i know excessive arachidonic acid from my understanding is is not a good thing and what you're saying is taking it exogenously uh would be the bad thing producing it yourself not a problem. Well, that's obvious that yeah. that that's taking it would be not a good thing. But I'm saying even is there a, a too much that the body would release because you're pushing it so hard yeah. that you know I don't know it just what that overcomes means. your body's ability. Well, if you think about it, so all hermetic stressors are good until they're not right, right until it's too much. So it's been shown that um, you know, believe it or not, getting a cold, you know, becoming sick, hermetic stress on the body improves your overall immune system once you recover. So a good hard workout, um, what is that? Well, it's different for each one of us, most likely. Right. Definitely different for clients that are untrained. And then there's people in their 70s or, or 80s who haven't trained for maybe 40 years, if ever. And so if we were to do uh, a five by five with them, or we were to do three sets of 15 for all these like exercises, whatever you want it to be, their tissue breakdown is going to be so great. The mm-hmm. inflammatory cytokines uh, and prostaglandin is going to be so high, right. they're going to be suffering for a week. Right. And so it's also the state of the individual. What's their sleep look like? What's their nutrition look right. like? Because you can get away with a lot more if everything else sure. is good. I call it, I mean, that's the rain barrel effect, right? Yeah. If your rain barrel is low, you do a hard workout, you can recover in a day, two days, whatever it might be, an appropriate amount. But for people that are already worn out, that rain barrel is overflowing. For them, a really hard workout, they flu like symptoms. They feel absolutely terrible. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Okay, so let's get back to these uh, these inflammatory cytokines and prostaglandins. Um, let's talk a little bit more about that process. So you exercise, your your body sends out an inflammatory signaler. It tells satellite cells, hey, get to work repairing these muscle fibers. And then in some cases, attach to them to, to cause hypertrophy. Yes. When does this go wrong? Or let's talk a little bit more about this process, I guess. Yeah, and the other benefit too with the arachidonic acid is that increases protein synthesis. Mm. Because again, your body never messes up. Like it always knows what it's doing. So when you do a weight training workout and there's some micro tears, micro damage to the muscle fibers, uh, what it does is say, well, how do we repair this? You know, it's, so it gives all the signals in order to be able to repair. The issue is, is that the American diet has changed dramatically over the last hundred years, but more specifically since the fifties and sixties. And so a couple of the stats, which are absolutely appalling is that we ate zero, um, pounds of soybean oil in the early 1900s. The average American now eats 24 pounds of soybean oil a year, making up 7% of their diet. It's Mm -hmm. outrageous. Like that is completely outrageous. Now, why is that outrageous? What is wrong with the soybean oil? So the soybean oil is one of the most inflammatory omega-6s. So omega-6s, we'll call it just LA, which is linoleic acid, that ultimately converts down to arachidonic acid. Got it. And so, yes, there's some positive benefits to arachidonic acid, but when you're eating things that are boxed and bagged and fast food, it's going to be high in corn oil, potentially sunflower oil. Sunflower oil is not even as bad as the corn oil, the soybean oil, and these oxidized polyunsaturated fats. No, don't get me wrong. People are always demonizing polyunsaturated fatty acids. There's a beneficial side of them as well. But when they're oxidized and they're oxidized omega-6s, this leads to an inflammatory Think of it like a waterfall and it just rained or they opened a dam. Well, the more you take in, the more what's called eocosinoids are produced. So those are the prostaglandins, thromboxanes, leukotrienes. I won't kind of get too deep into that, but that is what causes the inflammation in your body. And it dramatically changes your quality of life. So regardless if you have a diagnosed disease like an autoimmune issue or gut permeability issues or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, et cetera, every day you feel more tired, more stiff, more worn out, exhausted, and poor recovery from workouts. Mm. So, is it safe to say then? Would this be a um, would this be a fair uh, way to kind of exemplify this? Is if you were to have a, a graph, uh, there's a sweet spot with inflammation mm-hmm. where you're getting appropriate signaling, body's repairing, everything's good. There's a balance. If it goes too far to one area, too far to one end, too much inflammation, yeah. it's not a good thing. And so, and, and what, what causes it to be balanced besides your lifestyle and activity and sleep is 
the fatty acids that mm -hmm. you eat because these are the building blocks of, of many of these inflammatory markers. Like the exogenous, um, what you're taking in actually is, uh, you know, convoluting the whole process. Like it, it's, it's almost like it, it's out competing what your body naturally would be able to recover from. Prior to the 1950s and 60s, what, what would our typical diet in terms of ratio of fatty acids look like versus after? Like how, what did, where did it skew? How, how big of a difference? Yeah. Let's say that you ate your typical, um, farmer type diet, or, you know, you're working outside and you're getting your grass fed meats or pastured chickens, pastured eggs, you're getting your veggies. It's about a three to one ratio. So we can be all the way up to five to one from omega sixes. So there's actually more omega sixes to omega threes. We can talk about that because it actually it's it's about the cell membranes and the receptors on them that matter the most. Um, but then after that, it started to get get more skewed. So right now, the average American is about an eighteen to one from omega sixes to omega threes. And you said an upper limit would be like five to one of ideas. Five to one max. <laughs> wow, and we're wow. eighteen. Wow. Yes. So easily three to three more than three times as much. And so what's happening with that is we're producing too many of these inflammatory uh, pathways and not enough of the anti-inflammatory ones? Simply through food. That's why really you can you can try to manipulate uh, what I call the de-stress protocol, the diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, all those yeah. things, but you can never diet. What you put into your body is so crucial. Mm -hmm. So clean water, clean air, clean food. That's why people always ask like, well, what do I do first? Clean water, clean air, clean food. So it's like air filter, water filter, and then good food. Mm. Then after that, we can start to work on some of these more unique things. But if you're constantly putting in <laughs> that many omega-6s, mm. it's just, it's you're going to be always be fighting an uphill battle with inflammation. And so our job then is to look at diet first. Mm -hmm. And I think I asked you the last time we talked about this, if I remember or recall, you the sixes were well, the nines will outcompete the threes and sixes, right? Is that right? If you were in the cell can only take so much. So even if you're... Even if you're taking, like, let's say, supplementing with omega threes, hoping that's going to help. If you are way out of bounds on your sixes and nines, doesn't it outcompete the threes for your cells? So you can't even get the the real full benefits of that. Is that right? Well, there is there is a direct competition. So your body makes enzymes to make all of these processes happen. The enzymes are essentially proteins. So in this case, with breaking down your omega sixes and omega threes, it's elongase and desaturase. And what these do is they start to go from um, on the negative side or the omega omega sixes. Again, we need some, but it goes from linoleic acid, then down to arachidonic acid. And there are steps between that as well, DGL, et cetera. But then on the anti-inflammatory side, which are the omega threes, right. we go from alpha linoleic acid, so ALA, to eicosapentaenoic acid, EPA, and then docosohexanoic acid, which is DHA. And so as we move down, there's a competition and the competition is mainly happening at EPA and arachidonic acid. Okay. That's why EPA becomes so crucial because it can begin to blunt the effects of arachidonic acid mm. because both of those are the starting point for anti-inflammatory eicosanoids or inflammatory eicosanoids. And so some help the immune system and some inflame the cells themselves. Now, both of these though begin to make up our cells and actually cell receptors for everything from glucose to hormones, inflammation, Take letting waste out of this cell as well as taking in nutrients. All right, so this might be a little uh, you know sideways of this, but um, we typically will see a person's inflammatory markers, regardless of diet, lower as their caloric intake goes down. It, it, so that also plays a role, right? Like you could eat because, and I hate these because I don't think uh, I think that they oversimplify things and they don't really paint a clear picture. But you'll see people who will poke fun at you know, the wellness space and they'll say things like, it doesn't matter here. I'm going to eat a, a diet. That's all McDonald's, yeah. but it's low calorie. And look at all my inflammatory markers went down. So there is a, there is an effect of that as well, where you could just eat less. Not that you want to do that because you're still going to feel like crap and have weird cravings, right. but that, that seems to also have an effect on inflammation as well. Absolutely. And I think you're going to see it on maybe some of your labs here today is that for most people, it does not help to add more omega threes, like to a really high level. They've seen that they've shown this in the studies that if you start going above four grams a day of omega threes, not really a great benefit, definitely not above five grams. And so even if you're taking in a lot of omega sixes, adding more omega threes above that four or five grams, not beneficial, it can actually be harmful because okay, now you're adding more uh, of fats, essentially lipids that can become oxidized in the body, creating more inflammation. Mm. And the other part that we don't talk about is that, and this is something I'm talking about more on my podcast, is something called endotoxemia, 
or lipopolysaccharides. And this means that as we get more inflammation, as we're more stressed, the gut becomes more permeable. And we start to release more of these lipopolysaccharides, which basically is like um, sugar-coated fat, right, is mm. the best way to, to like say it, and, but it's bacteria that moves through the gut wall. Now, this creates inflammation in the body, setting off a host of issues such as all the inflammatory conditions we know of mm -hmm. and specifically autoimmune issues. Right. So if you're taking in less in general, there's less to be oxidized and less inflammation to create. Let's talk about when you say oxidized or oxidative stress, or what is that? So uh, just like the um, inflammation created from a workout, our bodies naturally create oxidation in the body whenever we eat or through natural cell membrane or cell processes. So if we're creating, if we're breaking down um, fats to fatty acids, carbs to sugars and proteins to amino acids, or we're repairing muscle tissue, any process in the body creates oxidation. So the more we eat or even the more we breathe, the more oxidation we create. So that's why you're saying, well, if you do that, then an exercise creates oxidative stress and running creates oxidative stress. Aren't those a bad thing? They're not, because what happens is, as long as the hermetic stressor is not too great, your body actually adapts to the oxidative stress, producing more of its own antioxidants in addition to our antioxidants in our food, okay. like our brightly colored fruits and veggies, but also our mitochondria begin to adapt as well, because our mitochondria can become too oxidized from something called reactive oxygen species. Probably heard of that before, yeah, ROS, right? Also, yeah. And so ROS are created also from too many omega-6s. So now we have these reactive oxygen species. Our body uses our own antioxidant storehouse to try to squelch those in addition to everything else that's being added. So what happens when someone fasts? Well, no more oxidation from food because you turned off that process. And so what happens is like fasting or letting things calm down ends up being the panacea for like everything. Now, again, if you fast for too long, what happens? Create higher amounts of reactive oxygen species. And then there's so, an imbalance there. That's right. Right. So it's it, oh, one more thing I want to say is people feel so good going from a a vegan based uh, plant based diet that also has omega sixes in it, but mostly polyunsaturated uh, omega sixes, to something like a let's just say like a carnivore, which would be like mm -hmm. the direct opposite, and they feel so much better because what happens is they're rechanging. Well, maybe we'll talk about this next. They're changing their cell membrane receptors. Like I mean, they're getting all other nutrients, things like that. But then people start to feel terrible after a certain amount of time uh, on a carnivore-based diet. And then all of a sudden, they're like, well, I'm just going to swing back then the other way. And they start to feel good. Why? Because <laughs> now they're changing their cell membrane structure again without creating balance. But over time, that might, I mean, these cells are changing over 120 days or so. What's going to happen? Well, they end up swinging the pendulum too far in one direction. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, just like I said, my own body weight is like, this kind of works for me. My lab tests look good. I feel good. I have energy. Mm -hmm. We eventually find our sweet spot with our body and our diet and our exercise that ultimately works for us. How does uh, too much oxidative stress hurt us? What does it do to the body? Oxidative stress, it creates free radicals. Mm -hmm. And those free radicals then are missing right? That oxygen-based molecule. And so what happens is we bring in, or they have an extra oxygen-based molecule. We bring in antioxidants to squelch those. But what happens really is they cause tissue destruction a lot of the time. So it can happen in your arteries or the endothelial-based tissue. And so now you get inflammation. Mm. We touched on this a little bit last time. We did. So all of a sudden now, what do you create? More cholesterol. Mm. Did your body mess up? Nope. You had inflammation in your arteries. Your body's creating cholesterol to help patch up the damage there. What's brought along with it? Calcium. Calcium begins to harden the arteries. Not ideal. Can you reverse that? Absolutely. Mm. You know, every single day you can do that. What happens if that inflammation goes to your thyroid? Thyroid breakdown. What if it goes to your joints? Joint breakdown. You get potentially Hashimoto's if there's an autoimmune issue uh, for your thyroid. Rheumatoid arthritis if it's an issue with your joints. Psoriasis if it's an issue with your skin. And everything has an underlying root cause. You mentioned that that uh, inflammation even has an influence on mental state. Uh, talk about that for for a sec. I, I did read some studies where this was relatively maybe the last five years where you're hearing some speculation or hypothesis that inflammation may be the root cause of physiological depression. Right, that those mm -hmm. depressed symptoms that people see and they're like, oh, it must be due to inflammation. That's what we think. So talk about that for a little bit. Well, inflammation caused multiple reasons why someone might have anxiety, higher stress, poor sleep, and depression. And keep in mind, if someone's not getting valid sleep or proper sleep, you're going to have a higher chance of depression anyways. So when we look at that, 
it's hormone imbalances. So mm. f- it's mainly for women that there's an estrogen dominance. So estrogen becomes much more dominant than progesterone, uh, typically uh, during the second uh, half of the menstrual cycle, during the luteal base phase. For men, it can lower testosterone levels. If you have low testosterone as a male, you're going to have lower drive, lower libido, lower ambition, lower mood. It, that's mm. just the way that it is. And you'll ask any guy who says, yeah. oh, I was able to boost my testosterone. Did you feel better? Yes. Like 100% of the time. Right. And so now, can that be taken too far? Yes, of course, right? Super physiological levels, probably not the best thing to do for a decade, right? Mm. Or more. And so then inflammation as well affects the nervous system. It affects the gut. When it affects the gut, it affects what's called the enteric nervous system. And part of that is the vagus nerve. Mm. The vagal nerve connects up to the brain. Highway to the brain. So we've got the gut to the brain access. And if something's wrong with the gut, the brain is getting signals, something wrong with the body. And so there's so many reasons as to why inflammation can affect the brain, not just locally, but the rest of the body. And what they found is by giving about 22, up to 2,200 milligrams, uh, which is 2.2 grams of omega-3s, dramatically helped depression and anxiety. Now, why can't somebody then, if somebody's listening, like, well, all these bad things about inflammation, why don't we see all this incredibly positive data on anti-inflammatory Drugs like mm. ibuprofen or naproxen, right? If inflammation is so bad, why does the data show that the chronic use of those doesn't lead to improvements in, in long-term health if those bring down inflammation? Yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. And I never think about things like that because we don't use those in our practice. So it's like, it's, it's a great question. So the reason is that you've ne- you never worked on the underlying root cause. So when you talk about that rain barrel and it's overflowing, well, you're just pouring more water in. Like you're Mm -hmm. just adding more to it, but you're never emptying. And so you can get temporary relief of some of those inflammatory pathways, which if you're talking about Advil and ibuprofen, it's it's a Cox enzyme pathway. Right. And so- how do you help that naturally? Well, you could say, oh, I'm going to use uh, stinging nettles and quercetin and butter burr. And like, there's a lot of great things that you could use or curcumin, but that is still not the answer, right? Because like your body wasn't lacking quercetin or perill or any of these things. What it was really de- dealing with was the poor sleep, the poor food, the potentially heavy metals, all mm-hmm. the other things that were creating inflammation in the first place. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Because I know when those, with NSAIDs, I mean, they they, they reduce or limit the, the production of prostaglandins, which are used for many, many reasons in the body, not just for- Positive and negative. Yes. yes, positive and negative. So what it makes me think of is that when your body's in this inflamed state, it's doing the next best thing. So we talked about the, like the arteries, for example, inflamed arteries, the body patches the walls with cholesterol, but eventually that can develop into plaques and that can cause heart attack. Yeah. So we're like, we'll get rid of the cholesterol. Well, no, because that was actually better than the alternative, which is your arteries burst. So, it, it, you know, my theory would be more along the lines of the, the anti-inflammatories there. Yeah. It reduces inflammation, but your body was producing more inflammation as a next best option, which isn't great, but it's better than the alternative, which to allow these underlying things to continue to fester without that inflammation. So in some ways your body's trying to help you, but you're still- Always. Yes. Yeah. That's the thing is like the inflammation, let's just go back to the muscle tissue breakdown. So your body released its own arachidonic acid. Uh, it's going to improve protein synthesis. It's going to bring satellite cells, going to help repair all of those right. things. We all want, we mm. want that. Great. So now you take uh, let's just say you take Advil or ibuprofen. So now you're shutting down some of that inflammatory process or you uh, got an injury and you're taking the anti-inflammatories. I get it. You feel better temporarily, but the inflammation was there to do cellular cleanup right. as well. Like it was removing debris that shouldn't be there as well. So what you're really doing is you're pushing these uh, things off to a later date instead of dealing with them right now. Now, can you create too much inflammation in the body? Yes. And so inflammation is always there for a reason, but you can be in a hyper-inflamed state that is not good. And so while you're working on the underlying root cause, sometimes it is important to use the ginger, curcumin, yeah. you know, those types of things. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, especially if there's like really bad huh. acute inflammation, you're in the hospital and then they got to hit you with something to prevent you from dying. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah com- I totally com- agree. Completely uh, different story. But yes. it's interesting because- we uh, focus so much on the symptom without um, trying to focus on, all right, what's well, causing the symptom in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the symptom is uncomfortable, um, you don't address the root. Uh, you don't necessarily fix the problem. You just don't feel it <laughs> in that's the right. short term. Yeah. You know? And so people think they're better though, right? Like that's the thing is like, yes. if you take the statin, it lowers your cholesterol. You take the beta blocker, it lowers your blood pressure. You take this, you take that. 
You, you think that you figured it out, but you haven't. You simply mask that thing from happening, which the body will always find then just a different outlet in order to express that inflammation. Yeah. How I've, always, I've always heard that um, runners, like you could visibly see this oxidative stress. And mm -hmm. is, this, is this something you see through the skin as well? Like you're talking about oxidative stress. Yes. Uh, or is that mainly just because of the repetitive, consistent stress and like a lower calorie intake? Yeah, that's a great question. So it can be both. So if you're an endurance-based runner, you're often running on fumes for a lot of the time, or you may be burning more calories than you're taking in, or just simply the act of you running 20, 30, 50 miles for a lot of the ultras that are becoming popular creates more oxidation in the body. Now, the issue with this is that it can, it always works from the inside out. So eventually it leads to more thinning of the skin, thinning of the hair, more wrinkles, fine lines, all of those things. And the, and the thing is, the body has to prioritize what it repairs first and is most important. So we'll always prioritize the things that need to be done, which are repairing vital things such as the arteries, et cetera. And so if you don't have enough vitamin C, collagen production, um, there's too many senescent cells under the skin, yeah, the skin begins to oxidize faster. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, so what, what are those senescent cells? I see supplements that uh, are purported to reduce that and they call them mm -hmm. zombie cells. Yes. Yeah, get rid yes. of zombie cells by taking this pill. Oh, yeah. oh God, here yeah. we go. For I know it's, and it's such early days. We have to be careful with that because senescent cells have some benefit to them. So basically what are senescent cells also called zombie cells? They're normal cells that never got the signal to die. So that's apoptosis. So mm -hmm. every cell, um, the body is, you know, it's a wonderful, amazing thing is like, each cell sacrifices itself, sacrifices itself at the end of its timeline. You know, for red blood cells, about 120 days. Mm -hmm. Not supposed to live past that. For like gut cells, three to four days, like that's that's just what happens. Well, these zombie cells don't get the signal. So they just hang, hang around. Mm -hmm. They no longer provide the same function. And when there's enough of them, they create a lot of inflammation. And that inflammation then ends up looking like the aging skin, hair, wh whatever it might be, joints mm -hmm. as well. So there are now plenty of supplements. I won't go through all of them right now, but like Fisetin and others like that help to decrease the senescent cells. Now, that's a good thing until it's not, because how do you know how many you have? Because when you start to reduce them too little, there seems to be a detrimental effect. So they have some positive messaging-based effect in the body that you shouldn't drop below. So what seems to be the best thing right now with early research is that you use them for, let's say, a two to three day period once a month or maybe every other week during a fast and they go in and they clean everything up from a cellular standpoint and then you don't use them every single day. Yeah. So you you just said something I wasn't aware. Gut cells only live three days? Well, certain cells like the enterocytes and others of the gut line. quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, get, yeah. they turn over really fast. Which makes a lot of sense why when you do like a 72 hour fast, why you feel like so different afterwards and you're like, you're turning over so many of your guts. I didn't realize that they only last. Well, your three gut days. cells are exposed to acid and bile and all kinds. They have to die and, and replace quickly. Yeah, but wouldn't that explain why too? Like when oh, you yeah. do a fast like that, it's almost like you're re you're getting like almost a full reset oh, yeah. then of like not taking yes. in anything that is bad for your gut then, and then you get all these fresh new cells. And really, from that point on, if you try your best to, I mean, I imagine that's probably why you also probably start a lot of people on a protocol where you fast them first. We do the. We do the seven-day detox with almost every human alive if they can do it. And so that is almost 72 hours, but it doesn't feel like it. So you're doing four shakes a day. And the shakes is it's very, it's like 40, 50 calories. So there's almost nothing in it. There's enough that you don't become too catabolic and we provide you with all what's called a phase one, phase two detox factors. So a lot of people go bananas when they hear the word detox. Right. Usually for good reason. It's usually referred to as like a bowel cleanse, certain teas, yeah. green juices. But the you know, physiologically in the body, your liver needs specific antioxidants and minerals like selenium, et cetera, during phase one, B, comp, uh, B vitamins like methylfolate, methylcobalamin. And then in phase two, it needs uh, taurine and N-acetylcysteine and glutathione, all your sulfur-based amino acids. Because if you don't and you're fasting and your body's not getting enough of those sulfur-based amino acids, your body goes from taking these fat-soluble toxins, making them into a, what's called an intermediary metabolite, which is a massive reactive oxygen species, like a massive free radical mm -hmm. that is dramatically detrimental for the body. Um, but if you have the phase two, then it creates a water soluble uh, toxin that you can sweat out, you can um, pee out, you can poop out, you can do and you can get out of the body very easily. So that's the goal of that. But what happens is the magic is 
your body knows how to heal. And by not putting anything else new in, you reduce oxidative stress. Right. You reduce. You don't need the thirty percent of the body's energy that goes towards digestion on a daily basis. Um, you're not producing any of those lipopolysaccharides that now can move through the gut wall that yeah. used to move through the gut wall and create inflammation. Yeah, I, you know, uh, conversations yeah. like this. What, what I what I really hope our audience, you know, besides the specifics that we're talking about, um, understand is that there's there's a, a balance in the body, and, and you can't look at one thing and say. Yes. Good or bad, like I remember in the muscle building space, they identified you know mTOR as this wonderful yes. muscle building signaler, and then you had the longevity people like mTOR is what causes cancer. We got to lower mTOR, and it's like it depends on the context right. that we're talking. And so everything you're talking about, a lot of it depends on context. You need some of it, but not too much, and your body's 100%. ability to tolerate it and work with it, which is why balance is so important with lifestyle and health, and why testing is so important because. You could test somebody and they might, they may, although extremely unlikely, they may need to supplement with omega sixes, right? That's a potential, mm -hmm. although I'm sure you've never run into that. But my point is the balance is very important yes. when you're looking at Well, somebody. this is why I love talking to Cabral is because I feel like you do a really good job of articulating both sides. Because unfortunately in our space, I feel like there's a, like a divide. You're either the wellness person mm -hmm. who is, you know, almost fear mongering around inflammation. And then you're the other side who's like, you know, oh, go ahead. In, uh, I, I, F, Y. Am, eat whatever you want as long right. as your calories are set in place none of that shit matters and it's just it's more complex than that when you from a high level because you guys end up taking on a lot of people who have just exhausted all their resources they've tried all these things and it's just like okay i submit what do i need to do what do you think is some of the most uh dangerous or detrimental things that our space is telling people because they i'm sure mm. they come to you and they're like well my trainer or my doctor or yeah. my person told me not to worry about this or i should do this what are some of the most common you know detrimental things that the, that the wellness or the health the health and fitness space is communicating to these people that are sending them to you if it fits your macros is the most dangerous like without a doubt but it works like that's the thing so like you get someone you say, well, I just focus on my macros and everything's good. And it's it's not that that's not true. There's body transformation that I can give you a program for that's going to work unbelievable. And then there's also a way on this side is longevity, just so you just talked about mTOR. So the problem is, okay, yeah, let's worry about mTOR. Let's only increase AMPK, right? Mm. And let's increase um, autophagy. Well, the problem is then you waste away and you're no longer <laughs> functional. Yeah. Like by 60 years old, yeah. you can't pick up your grandkids. Now you die from like, being weak. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's just not that enjoyable life either. So there has to be a balance. But the, um, if it fits your macros, you literally can't eat ice cream. You can eat whatever you want. And now we're back to the omega-6s. And that just goes back to education. Because if you knew what was happening in your body beyond 30 years old, like 40 years, because I was a, you know, I was an 18-year-old personal trainer. So I totally get it. I could eat whatever I wanted. Didn't matter at all. I wasn't getting any body fat, you know. So it's like until it did matter. <laughs> until it did. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like that's that's the thing. It's like, "Oh, okay, I turned 37 or I turned 40, whatever it might be." Uh, and then these things matter cuz you're also now focused on, "Oh, I've got kids now. Like I don't want to have a heart attack." I don't mm. like we talked about last time. 55 years old, you know, men start to have heart attacks. Mm. And that's scary. And we talked about this. What's the first sign of a heart attack? Oftentimes it's sudden death, yeah. which is wow. terrible, right? Yeah, like yeah. that's the first sign. It's not, oh, I get pain going down my arm. No, it's like dead within minutes. And so if we're not looking at lab testing and we're not doing these things, it can eventually catch up with us. How yeah. important is this inflammation test? You guys do a lot of testing. Yes. Um, when you rank them all out, like how important is this one? And how important is it that somebody retests themselves or something like this? This is by far and away, the one of the easiest ones to run. It's a simple figure prick that you'd be testing like your own blood sugar for. Uh, anybody ages three years old up and up can do it. And you only really need to run it twice. So you run it the first time and then you hop on a diet and or supplement that you say, I can maintain this for life. And then you rerun it to make sure you're at a three to one ratio. And if you maintain that diet, you're good. Now, every time you change a diet, you can then just rerun it again. Mm. But you wait about eight weeks or so. Okay. And so I was actually just testing out new things in my diet. And so I still rerun mine like once or twice a year because I want to look at those numbers. I play with it a little bit. I see you know, what my yeah. diet is doing along with supplementation. So for me, pretty simple. I take two grams of omega-3, uh, higher EPA than DHA, the daily omega-3 support. Other people have their own favorite brand. I always say, great, the brand might be spectacular. Just test. Right, like, and a lot of people don't want to test. Like, oh, I don't need a test. Like, just test, just run it. Just you mm -hmm. want the truth, and a lot of people 
actually don't necessarily okay. want that. Speaking of the truth, we yes. you redid our tests. Yes. yes. So we did a test with you. The first one was a year ago. It was a little over a year ago. And then now, the second yeah. one was relatively now, recently. Now, before you yes. add, tell us, I do. I want to share, at least from my... I was better about taking omegas on this run than I probably ever have. Supplements and being consistent, I'm horrible. Yes. This is one of the best runs of like being consistent with my, yeah. my omegas. I, I was very consistent as well, second time around, but yeah. I ran out. And then for like a week or two before I took the test. So I don't hope that didn't make that big of a difference. But it I think does, all of us, not. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in your blood. But I'll, okay. we'll go over that for we sure. We all took yeah. them. Yeah. We were all pretty regular about Good. It, so. And I mean, that's that's what I always like to chat about with people because it is all about your body's absorption of the omega-3s, your diet, because no matter what, um, well, it, actually, so your omega-3 supplementation can balance out your diet. There's no doubt about that. But you just also have to know, last time, I think, Sal, you were eating about a dozen eggs a day. Yeah. Last time, we, we I yeah. don't know if you're still doing that no. or not. Okay. And so, you know, we'll talk about that with arachidonic acid because uh, egg yolks have a really high level of arachidonic acid. It's yeah. also one of the reasons why they're very anabolic. Uh -huh. you know, these are an anabolic food, eggs, but um, what happens inside of your body inflammation-wise. Right. So, yeah, happy to go over that here today. Yeah, I switched to nachos. No more, no more. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, who as, won? Who lost? Let's get it. Yeah, yeah so we'll go, we'll go as we always do. Have a little fun with it. We'll go from, um, uh, let's go worst to best. Oh, so, yeah. first, so this first person is the worst one. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Okay. And so well. now keep in mind, average American, about an 18 to 1. Um, healthy people in my practice, meaning not supplementing with omega threes, just a good diet. They're about a six point seven to one. Okay, so average. just kind of yeah. So what you're measuring here with this test is ratio, ratio. Of six to three. Yes, exactly six to three, and then EPA to arachidonic acid. Okay, so and that's Two really important. We're looking at yes, okay. because EPA. The strongest of the omega threes can flow down to DHA, which is great for the brain, nervous system. Arachidonic acid creates the most inflammation. Okay. All right, I get so nervous when he's in a I know, the worst me too. Place. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> just so, don't be yeah. me. All right, and I don't eat a lot of fish. So. Now, I just want to say this. Worst. Was hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. This is perfect for people just getting started with strength training. It's fifty percent off. Then we have a bundle. That's different. It's called the Starter Bundle. That includes our most popular programs, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, and there's a nutrition guide. Great way to get yourself going with strength training, with nutrition, warm-ups, and a workout. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. By the way, if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash inflammation, Stephen is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N, and then Cabral, C-A-B-R-A-L, so stephencabral.com forward slash information, you can get a free at-home inflammation score test. All you have to do is pay for shipping. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so we know you're gonna love this episode. Now, this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, Haya Health. They make multivitamins for children that are not candy and that have the appropriate levels of nutrients. This is the multivitamin for kids that we support. Go check them out. Go to hayahealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A health.com forward slash mind pump. That link will give you 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Worst was Justin. Yes. I knew it. But yes. Justin it. made the biggest improvement over last time. Oh, oh so, wow. So put differently, he go. sucked so bad yes. that he well, I, my, totally my, improved. You were, the you bar was yeah. so low. <laughs> <laughs> All I had to do was just kind of barely step, step over, over it. it. That's and it. here we are. Well, right. so last time you were eating a brick of cheese a day is yeah. what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> So yeah, that changed a little bit. Your yeah. uh, your last time you were eleven point three for your omega six, and you were nineteen for your arachidonic acid. So basically, uh, to yeah. EPA, yeah. DHA, okay. you're an eight point one oh, now, wow. so Jeez. much better. Okay, and uh, twelve point one down oh. from nineteen. Wow. So huge improvement. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. right. as so long as I'm improving, we'll go. We'll go with Good. recommendations <laughs> after this. We'll just kind of go over straight stats Technically right now. It was impossible to go the other direction. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or you'd be dead. Uh, <laughs> very very high. Oh, oh, challenge me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now, Challenge me. I'll, Sal, yours. So, Sal, you're, you're second. Ooh, cool. Let's go, Doug. Let's Sal. go. No, we can do it. <laughs> so, wow. last time, though, Sal, you were 22.2 for arachidonic acid. Whoa. Yeah. One of the highest I've seen. Yeah. It's very impressive wow. to be that high. <laughs> <in arachidonic acid. laughs> very high. Does that contribute? Now, does that contribute, eggs, bro? Does that contribute to, it's important to being the strongest in here? Would that be why? <laughs> okay. All right, uh, or at least maybe lifting yeah. the most and take, eating the most eggs. Okay, yeah. I was going to say drinking the most eggs. Nothing to do with the anabolics and peptides. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> so you were yeah 22 now you're down to a 13.8 so that, wow. that's actually very that's impressive. A huge improvement um omega-3s to omega-6s <laughs> yeah. uh to omega-3s was a 7.1 last time this time 7.8 
Oh, so, so that went up a little bit. Yeah, we still, yeah. still need good. to improve that. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. I'm going to give you exactly now, based on these labs, what do we need to do? So, and then your audience, I think are a lot like you as well. I mean, yeah. at least a lot of people like, okay, I, I'm assuming that you guys eat around one gram per pound of yeah. Uh, yeah. body weight, yeah, protein wise. So yeah. you're eating more protein, probably the average yeah. population. So we're going to talk about that in recommendations because okay. mm -hmm. we've now run, we probably run 50 to 100,000 of these labs in our practice. Wow. So wow. we've run wow. so many. So we can kind of wow. see all walks of life. All right. Next up, it's Adam. Oh, Doug, the winner. Yep. Yeah. Look at you, guy. Yours nice, was huh? almost exactly the same. Oh, uh, interesting. Around a seven. Yeah, 7.3 this time. Okay, so now what's really interesting about that, unless maybe I, you just caught me at a good time last time, this was the best I've been on the omega-3s. Like I, So you were eating a lot of sushi last time. Oh. I had to go back and listen to that just because I wanted and to I'm make not sure. Right now. I knew. Yeah, and so it, it makes a difference, right? Interesting. Because if you eat fish three to four times a week, it is it can be the same as taking your daily two grams a day of omega-3s. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. Which is kind of so cool. You did the that, less, I mean, so less this was kind of, and I've talked about this on the show openly before, when I'm really good, but this was especially when I was competing and really dialed on my diet, I would I would pay attention. And if I had, uh, you know, fish three or four times a week, that'd be the time I wouldn't be taking my, my omegas. And yeah. then if I didn't, I would I would supplement with omegas. So, yes. wow. Okay, that's cool Dang. to know. Yeah. Interesting. I switched so, from chicken nuggets to fish sticks. And <laughs> <laughs> didn't even make that big a difference. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I almost identical on both, huh? Yeah, almost identical. Wow. Uh, Arachidonic acid was 9.9 .9 last time. This time is 9.8. Okay. So my... It does mean we need more of that EPA. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we'll talk about that because we can get it again through diet and or supplementation. All right. Here we go, Doug. All right. Last time you were a seven point six for omega sixes to omega threes. This time you're a three point nine. Wow. Whoa. Hey, Last time on arachidonic acid you were fifteen. Now you're a two point eight. Wow. Whoa. So yours is basically perfect. You're not inflamed at all. No. Mm, great. Great. That's weird. Wow. What yeah. is this from? What have well, you been doing lately? Okay, I'm going to say, I, I cheated too? actually a little bit. I cheated. Let's talk about the cheat. Let's hear so so yeah. I've been taking your supplement for probably a year now. Oh, so, I mean, so this is a big sales pitch for yeah. you, but <laughs> it's just true. I've been- well, we I, guarantee it to work. So yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to see that it's working. Yes. <laughs> no, that's true. I've been taking it Good. for about a year now. Good. And, and uh, consistent. Yeah. And I also eat fish. Yes. Not- Lately, not so regularly, but yeah, for example, I just went to Europe and I had fish a few times and- uh, yeah, so I eat that and sushi. So maybe that's the reason. That's great. Well, and the big change was the arachidonic acid. And so getting in more EPA, again, we talked about that, blunts some of that arachidonic acid, which is great. But you must, you probably cut down on certain foods as well. I don't know if it is maybe a little less. Well, no, you're taking, you were taking the trisepatide also. You probably reduced overall calorie intake when we, were, when we took this. That's true. I've been doing that. Yeah. Uh, also, I have reduced my egg consumption so yep. maybe that's part of it mm. um and again i'm not here to say that eggs are bad food no i'm just saying that they're higher in arachidonic acid i just went through a phase in. where i wasn't eating a lot of eggs so yeah, yeah. Mm. wow so those are those are excellent so you everybody two soft gels a day uh yes mm -hmm. okay so that's the right dosage for you perfect and then for uh you guys i want to talk about recommendations okay. so here. everybody improved except for adam basically <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, Adam doing. basically stayed the same. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. crazy. He switched sushi for for fish oil. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. stayed the same. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. It wasn't, and it's not bad. Like that's what we see as our baseline for people eating a, a good diet. Yeah, you know, but they they need to do a little bit more now. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't have made this recommendation typically. Like let's just say four or five plus years ago. But when you're eating a couple of pounds of meat per day. Mm -hmm two grams of omega-3s don't seem to move the needle oh. past that seven to eight. Like well, that's the takeaway I'm getting right now. It sounds like what I was doing in the past of like, oh, I had three, three, four times a week of this fish, so I won't have any omega. It seems like I should always take the omega-3s all yeah, the well, time. That's what and then in practice. addition to that, I should be trying to get my fish in there also, or exactly. maybe even doubling up what the, I wasn't taking in omegas. So we don't, we don't double. So there's, again, people go into like, oh, omega-3s, like there's these negatives to them. One is that you can overdo anything. Yeah. So that's one. Right. So you don't want to take more than four grams a day. We never go above three. So in certain conditions, okay, may maybe for a period of a month or two months to really knock down inflammation. But for the three of you, besides Doug, uh, I would recommend three soft gels a day of okay. the daily omega. -day. I think we were doing two. Yes, yes. Were doing exactly. Two. Okay. okay. So, but this is how you test. I mean, this is real personalized You know, for that. And right. then trying to switch out three to four times a week. So three to four meat-based meals. Let's say you're doing meat three times a day right now yeah. or maybe four. Uh, one of those, try to get in fish. Okay. And it could be mackerel, sardines. Uh, it could be 
anchovies. We just lost. You used, to, you used to do that a lot. Do you not do that right I, I, now? I like. Uh, you I go like through sardines. phases where you're. You yeah, used to I like. Do that. I like sardines. I'll eat sardines. But Great have you? Been, were you during this test no. time? Yes. No, no, It'd be no, interesting no. to see what your test yeah. would be when you actually do that. They move it. the needle. Sardines, believe it or not, people yeah. start to add them in. You know, every other day or so for lunch. It dramatically moves the needle. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're, they're very, they're inexpensive. It's yes. a great source of protein. It's a great bodybuilder food on top you of carry the them anywhere. Yes. Yeah. I've I mean, always like, had a hard easy. time with trying to, I, although I, I should admit, I haven't tried. It's just looking Bro, at it. Bro, sardines like, and mackerel are good. I think I people know. confuse them with anchovies. They're yes. not anchovies. They're, they're, no. they're, and they're really good. You Is there salt. a way I can hide them in something so I don't feel put like Put hot I'm sauce on them. Oh, just put hot sauce it on tastes, them. Tastes fantastic. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I eat them straight out of the can. When I, I, know. Fact, I, I have a little hot sauce in the can. I think it's because the little eyes are looking at me. I just have a hard time with that. You know, Just like a seal. Yeah, because they're like the full fish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they take the heads off the sardines. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like, what are you getting? They're tiny little ones. Oh, I thought they had little they, heads on them. They have little uh, bones in, but you can actually you eat, eat the bone. that and get calcium. I'm fr like literally, okay. it's a it's a great. Okay, I gotta yeah, the bone. Yeah. Okay. I, I gotta the, try it. Yeah, I you don't feel the bones. Okay. So, and the reason why sardines are good is they're also very low in in heavy metals, right? Because they're or they're on the food chain. Smaller fish. Yes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That is one of the issues with omega three supplementation, mm -hmm. is that one one of the reasons why there's a lot of negative studies is that they can be oxidized. So that's not a good thing. And the other is they can have heavy metals. So it's just, yeah. it is about working with the functional medicine based I, Now I'm going to sell that. this a little bit more for you because, <laughs> uh, because we have a lot of people on here who are like, well, I just want to build muscle, whatever. There are studies that show that supplementing with omega threes improves, uh, strength adaptations and muscle gain. Mm -hmm. My speculation is because so many people are so off with their ratios that supplement omega threes helps balance things out. And when you're more balanced, your body's going to adapt to stress much more effectively, especially if you're somebody that tends to train, you're a fitness fanatic. So you tend yeah. to push the limit a little too often. Those omega threes can really m improve that balance. So, Without a doubt. yeah. So do you notice this with some of your, your patients as well? Well, they'll supplement with this and then their athletic performance improves. So this is why I really like talking about the lab testing and then the omega-3 supplementation is because, yeah, I'm big on other omega-3 foods. So what is there? There's um, olive oil, there's walnuts, there's um, flax seeds, chia seeds. They just don't convert as well. It's like up to 10% like conversion. So, so it's explain just not that, that great. Because the, the fatty, because you could get vegan, uh, you know, supplements to help improve your omega-3s. Yes. But they aren't usable your yet. Your body has to convert yeah. them. That's all well, they, so what they can do is they can extract DHA from a lot of um, seaweed or perilla okay. or mm -hmm. any of these things. And so you can actually get the DHA. Now you have to take a lot of it. And I don't love right now. I think we'll improve this in the supplement industry, the hexanes and solvents and things like that to, to draw them out. So it's just, it's not my favorite. It's not a clean version in my opinion. Yeah. So what do we do? Okay. Chia seeds and uh, walnuts, but walnuts are very high in omega sixes as well. So it's kind of this balance right. that we mm. found is, and also in studies, they show that while well, if it's more of a linoleic acid, it doesn't convert, uh, it doesn't have as many negatives to it. Regardless, you have to get in omega threes. And the reason why I'm saying that is that this is one of those products that makes a dramatic improvement in people's quality of life. Is like this dramatic. So there are some supplements that I noticed as a as a trainer. Now now I understand why, but as a trainer, I noticed when my vegan clients would supplement with creatine for example or omega 3s, they got a really like profound uh, effect. You know, all my clients would notice something from them, but my vegan clients like they would take creatine, it was like their brain fog was gone. They would supplement with omega threes and they'd feel phenomenal, and that's because creatine you get from animal tissue, mm -hmm. omega threes when you consume them in the very usable, ready to go form from animal sources. So yes. this supplement is probably even more important for someone who's a vegan who's willing to take a supplement that maybe comes from an animal. If they are, it makes a tremendous difference. Okay. Yes, because it's balancing. Up. If you think about it, you're getting a lot of your protein from, let's say, like nuts and seeds and beans and legumes as well. And I've, I, we have many people in our practice that are vegan. I went vegan for months to you know test it out. But the bottom line is this, is that all those products, like a hemp seed, which I love, like those are great. Yeah. They also have a lot of omega-6s. So it's very difficult to find a pure and higher omega-3. And when you were talking about you know, body transformation clients or personal training clients, they found that two to three grams a day increased metabolic rate by 14% and clients burned about 10% more calories per day. Just from that? They didn't change anything else. So boosting metabolism. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, And I'm not saying that it's a panacea, 
But the reason why it's so effective is that people are so deficient in omega-3s. Right. That's why. Yeah, right. so it's not yeah. like a miracle supplement. It's literally you were deficient. It's what your body craves. It's, yeah. what, it's like taking in, all of a sudden you were low on B12 and you're anemic or you were low on iron, you're anemic. You feel like a different person when you get those. Like when you get in iron or B12, you're like, oh, right. it changed everything. Yes, because that was a true deficiency. Yeah. And 90% of the population are walking around with a true deficiency in omega-3s. Yeah. Does does uh, balancing this out help with gut inflammation? It must, right? It helps with all inflammation, so it must also help with gut inflammation. Yes. Um, cytokines and then anything ingested through the gut are going to be systemic. And so when you look at it, well, why am I inflamed in my joints or my skin or I get migraines? And like, why does, why does omega-3s help with all of those things? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because your genetics do matter. Epigenetics, then lifestyle and everything else, then kind of pulls the trigger, right? For what's going to happen yeah. within your body. And then omega-3s goes to work on wherever that inflammation is affecting you the most. Are omega-3s, uh, would you say, one of the most popular or common, I should say, supplements that you recommend to your your patients? We have something called the Daily Foundational Protocol. Okay. And that's essentially your daily nutritional support, which is all your vitamins, minerals, everything your body needs on a daily basis, like a daily activated multivitamin. Um, omega-3s, vitamin D3 should be on that list. Inside of the daily active, activated multi or all your B-complex, and then daily probiotic support. So most people, you need those as a starting point. So you can get fancy, like we just talked about with um, Fisodin or Spermidine or yeah. you know rest of uh, resveratrol or nicotinamide riboside, like any of these. They're, they have their time and place, no doubt about it. Hmm. But they don't really matter if you're not getting in your whole B complex, your omega threes, your vitamin D three. Like it's yeah. just even with omega threes, the cofactors to absorb are calcium, magnesium, it's zinc. Uh, and it's a bunch of your B vitamins like B6. Mm. So you still need those to work on all these different conversions. So there's no one perfect supplement, but I will say that a lot of people can get a lot of vitamins and minerals they need. And a lot of people do take a activated multivitamin or D DNS, but they don't take the omega-3s because they think they're getting through their diet because the diet's good. Almost everybody has a higher omega-6 to omega-3 diet. So is it safe to say then improve your your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, improve your DHA arachidonic acid ratio, and you're likely to notice improvements in sleep, cognitive function, soreness, stiffness, the way your skin looks, mm -hmm. uh, basically looking and feeling younger. Would that be safe to say? Yes, and it's because I've been alluding to it the whole show is that it changes the cell membrane of your cells. So the cell membrane is a bilipid membrane, so two different fats. Omega-3s, we'll call them, and omega-6s. Let's call omega-3s the softer uh, fats, and let's call omega-6s the harder fats. So you need a balance. We are talking about that earlier. So really high omega-6 diets, Stiff. Hard, yeah, stiff. Hard to get in oxygen, nutrients, and waste out. Too soft, too many of the polys, oxidized. Weak cell membranes, faster turnover, more catabolic, and that's why we need the balance. The problem is we have stiffer cell membranes, more inflammation. What does that do? Changes cell receptors. So can't get glucose in as easily. It is one of the reasons why people become type two by diabetic. Really? Not just because of glucose. So this yeah. contribute this will contribute to that. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. wow. So an inflammatory diet, specifically from inflammatory fats, changes your cell receptors, everything from your hormones, uh, which again, insulin, hormone, and we're talking about um testosterone, estrogen in women, mm. all of these things are, are deeply dependent on the receptors in the cell membranes. In the rare wow. cases, you get a patient who you do one of these tests and you're like, wow, everything looks great. What's mm -hmm. their diet look like? That, that's a great question. So I always ask that. So I oversee a team. And so, you know, we've got 16 uh, different coaches just, just in our team and we're, we're working with thousands of people uh, every single month. And so whenever I see someone come in below a three to one, I always ask, hey, just ask what that person's eating. Yeah. And nine out of 10 times, they're eating fish every single day wow. uh, if they're not doing supplementation. Wow. And, and a lot of the time, believe it or not, they heard an episode on sardines and they're eating sardines. Uh, sardines are one of the most potent yeah. omega-3s because they have the skin on them as well, mm -hmm. which is where a lot of those um, are. But you could eat uh, the the salmon, the trout, the anchovies, the mackerel, or the um, sardines and, and you're good. Yeah. Like those will all work. Wow. Yeah. Imagine if you just listen. I'm going to try, bro. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try. I just haven't done it, right? I'm, yeah. Watch. I'm going to end up liking it. It's not going to be the best. They're really good. I like hot yeah. sauce too. So maybe just a little bit of that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, good. Good to hear. I'm glad we all, most of us improved. Uh, <laughs> well, but we also now know what, what do we need to do? We're going to add yes. one more soft gel a day. Yes. The daily omega-3 yeah. support. We're going to try to substitute a meat meal 
per day or every other day. Maybe. With fish. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. No, and, I feel uh, like I know I know exactly yolk. what I need to do now because I know what I did before. Well, you did salmon it's... so often. You yeah. would eat a lot of salmon. Well, that so I mean it, it's literally what I just said. It's like I I would not take omegas when I would eat fish, which is it, what it's telling me yeah. is like I need to eat that much fish as I normally do and yes. take three. You know, and I bet I'm gonna be I'm gonna be. Let me be right ask there. you this real quick, uh, Dr. Cabral, because you hear uh opponents of uh grass fed meat. And what they'll say is something like, well, the fatty acid difference between grass-fed and conventional is not that big. It's not going to make that big of a difference. My argument was always, well, if you eat meat every day, it does make a difference over time. Mm-hmm. Like, is, is there? Am I right? Is there somewhere in the middle? Absolutely. No, the inflammatory components of a grain-fed meat is far higher in omega-6s than omega-3s, just like it is for farmed fish versus wild caught. So yeah. it's good that you brought that up. Farmed salmon is not going to give you the benefits of wild salmon. It's just not like not even close. Wow. Because the, the, you are what you ate, ate, if that makes sense. Yeah. You are what your food eats. That's right. Yeah. So that, that's a better way of saying it. Exactly. And so (laughs) if you're, if cattle are eating, uh, antibiotic laced grains and things like that, that weren't necessarily good for them, they're eating soy, right? I mean, that's where a lot of our soy goes to is cattle. So their fat reflects the fat that they ate. 100%. 100%. Which also tells us that our fat reflects the fat that we eat. That, and it's so much higher in fat. Wow. When you look at, let's just look at elk or bison, or and like yeah. you, you can look at beef as well, but a grass-fed animal, as long as it's grass-finished, because <clears throat> a lot of these now can say right. grass-fed and they're really grain-finished, because that's how you put on another 150 to 300 pounds in the last couple of months of life to yeah. be able to sell it for more money, oh, wow. right? So that it actually really does matter because- that changes things dramatically, but grass-fed meat is far is far lower in fat. So no matter what, even though it does improve, you're taking in less total arachidonic acid. Yeah, I mean, you 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 look at a uh, a tri-tip or a ribeye that's grass-fed versus grain, and they don't look the same at Not, all. They don't taste the same. Mm-hmm. They don't look the same. No, no. 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 Yeah. Well, great. This has been wow. illuminating. I'm glad uh, we're we're moving in the right direction. So we'll add another. Uh, soft gel. And it it sounds like uh, most people should do this test, if not everybody, just yes. kind of see where you're at uh, and see what changes the, you know, moves the needle and then stay on that path. Yeah, without a doubt. So for your community, we put together a site. It is stephencabral.com slash inflammation, I believe. Our team will send you over the link. And so what we do is we offer this lab for a hundred people every single month for free. And then you can buy it anytime over at Equal Life. And you know, my goal is to get this education out there. That's awesome. The thing, so. so is it a hundred of our listeners are going to get it for free? Yes. Oh, that's yep, great. Just pay shipping. Sweet. Beautiful. So it's a $179 or so test. Absolutely worth it. Get on it. And you get it for free. Just pay the shipping and we ship it out to you. Hopefully. Always uh, so generous to yeah. our audience. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Yeah. Cabral. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me on. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 